Laney Wilson. Big day today. You got a you got an album out, big one. Yes, I out. I mean, it's. I was looking at a, a lot of the the songs. You know, I was track one's Hillbilly Hippie, which is interesting because I wonder when you go into the room, do you go, hey, this is what my nickname is. I want to write it, <laughs> or does it get written and go, well, I'm gonna t-. like, what's the story with that? So I was actually headed down to Alabama to pick up my little French bulldog. It was in the middle of the pandemic, and I was gonna name her Hippie, and I w- I just honestly started writing it as I was driving down there. I'm just like. And that's are you, how it are you recording out. it in your phone while you're doing it, or are you just remembering it? Because I never remember stuff. I remembered it. I um, I will say that I, I kind of, maybe I shouldn't do this, but sometimes I'm like, if I didn't remember the melody, then I don't know if it was good enough to begin with. Mm. Oof, I'd be in trouble. I mean, yeah. Not that my stuff's any good anyway, <laughs> but I'd be in, I can't remember anything. Do you often do that? If you're writing a song, will you just try to remember it and go into the room two, three days later with it? I mean, there's times where I jot it down because there's so much going on. But, yeah, there's definitely times where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to let it be. And then if it comes out a little different in the writing room, then fine, too, because I just want it to be what it's going to be. You push the vocal note thing on your phone, though, sometimes also and, and put it in vocally. Do you ever listen back and go, what was I thinking? Thinking. Yes. And about five months ago, I was headed into town and I did have this melody and I was like, okay, this is a little different than what I normally do. And I definitely ain't going to remember it. So I hit record on my phone as I'm driving. Cop pulls me over. And he's oh, like, what do you see? I was phone? like, I'm so sorry. I'm headed to a co write. I got six, no, you're six CMAs. <laughs> That's what you say immediately <laughs> when go. he pulls you over. What did um, he say to you? He was like, you were on your phone. I was like, I'm so sorry. I was just recording a voice memo. I had this melody. I know it's no excuse. Um, and he just kind of looked at me. He was like, just go write a good song. Get Did out you of know here. who you were? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell. That's when you try to sing, <laughs> you know, things a man ought to know. Like, just bring it up and like sing a this little chorus. This is the melody I was yeah. thinking. Sing a little <laughs> chorus to him. Um, uh, the album, it is out today. And it's called Bell Bottom Country, and we'll come back to that in a second. But I do want to talk about the CMAs. I brought it up when they did the announcement that morning, and it was like, Laney Wilson. I was like, well, look at Laney. You got another one. Laney Wilson. Well, look at Laney. Then it was six, and you were the most nominated. I wonder what that day was like for you because it had to feel intense in the best way. Oh, my gosh, man. It was was strange. Um, They called me. It was probably like 7 a.m., and I was dead asleep. My publicist and manager called me. And they were like, well, you got nominated for a CMA. And I'm like freaking out. You because know. ACMA. Yeah, for ACMA. Yeah. And then I put one foot on the hardwood floor and they were like, um, and you were the most nominated. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't wait to call home and tell my mom and daddy. My daddy was in the hospital at the time and he had been in the hospital for two months. And so I was so excited to share some good news with them too. What did they say? Uh, they were freaked. They were like, who did you pay to make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> are they so proud of you? They are so proud. I mean, they believed in me before anybody did. And it's just, it's exciting for them too. So when you're making those drives back to Louisiana to do shows, you're living here trying to make it and you're struggling, you're driving back, back and forth, living in a trailer outside of a place. In your wildest dreams, where were, what were you doing? Oh my gosh, man. Because you got to be getting close to the point where you're, you're getting close to being able to reach those wildest dreams. And I guess, I mean, that's the point I'm kind of making here. Like yeah. it's your wildest dreams. What did you see yourself doing? I knew that I just wanted to write music. I didn't know like what the whole artist thing was going to look like, to be honest. Before I was anything, I was a songwriter. I mean, I wrote my first song at nine years old and I just got bit by the bug. So I knew that I had to do that. Um, so like I said, I didn't know what the whole artist thing was going to look like. Um, so for years, I just really focused on my writing and would just try to get in rooms with people. And then at that point is when my demos kind of started getting passed along. And, you know, people then kind of started viewing me as an artist at that point. Um, I, it's really weird. Like, I, I always had a weird sense of peace about knowing that I was going to be okay. I just didn't know it was going to look like this. And what does it look like? I mean, is it weird to have so many people? Because you are definitely on, uh, if you think of a stock market chart, you're, you're shooting straight up right now. And That's when good. you shoot straight up, all these new people start coming around and telling you how cool and how awesome you are. And yeah, it's people fun. Be like, right. It's exciting. Uh, but then it's like, who do I even trust now? Is yeah. this happening at all? Where you're like, I didn't even know you like three days ago. A little bit. I mean, I have people message me like, I'm your first cousin's best friend. Yeah, That's like true. coming to a show. <laughs> so, but on the, on the other side, it's like people that have been with you forever. Yeah. That you get to be like, now we get to go do this. Yes. Because we've done, like, who's been with you for, 
years that you're like, now we get to tour this big. Now we get to do these shows. Oh, my gosh. I have a great group of, like, girlfriends here in town who are also artists and musicians and songwriters. And also um, my manager, she's my best friend. Her name is Mandolin. And we were, we've been at this for eight years together, and we've been getting to see the entire world together and experience things together. And I'm watching her chase her dreams, and she's watching me chase mine, and we're getting to do that hand in hand. And also my family is getting to see parts of the world that, I mean, my daddy never even rode on a dang airplane until a couple years ago. So this is really strange for them. How is he? He's doing great. He's home. Yeah. Um, he just had his 60th birthday, and... Yeah, we thought we were going to lose him there for a minute. I remember I remember yeah. when that was happening. Yeah, it was rough. And he's on the road to recovery now? Yep, he is, and he's going to walk the CMA carpet with Oh, me. come on, really? That's he awesome. Really is. awesome. He's been working really hard to get to that point, and um, yeah, he's going to be there. He's going to steal the show. She's got a new album that is out today. It's called Bell Bottom Country. Finally, finally, finally. like the big album, all the songs that kind of sh shares all throughout who you are. That's it. Yeah, we've been waiting for a long time. You've put out little little projects, yeah. little groups of songs, but this is it. And what I like is, because I've listened to it, and you were such a songwriter, you talked about how when you came to town that that's what you thought you wanted. I mean, that is what you're doing, but it's yeah. like that was your goal. But okay. now all this other artist stuff is happening. That being said, 13 songs on it that you have written mm -hmm. with, with other folks, but also uh, the last track is Four Non Blondes, What's Up, mm -hmm. written by Linda Perry, you know. What's I'll that? sing it for you guys. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why that song? Man, I, I've been singing this song for years, um, even back home in Louisiana when I was playing with a cover band. And it just seemed like the song that, I mean, everybody would be sitting down, all of a sudden those hey hayes would come in and everybody would stand up, their hands would go in the air. And then I started playing it with my current band now. And it's just, it's just a good time. It is. And I felt like I wanted to, you know, I wanted it to be on the record um, because I, there's not a show that I play where I do not play this song. And so we just put our own little country spin on it. I got to hang out with Linda Perry last fall. Oh, that's cool. Get to she have all her. the tattoos? You see them on? Oh, she is. Like all of her hands and stuff? That's cool. She is intimidating. Really? Yes. Is she small but still intimidating? Yes. She, yeah. She's tiny but mighty. I'll tell you that. And she's just, she's a cool person. So she gave me her blessing and um, here we are. Lainey Wilson's complete project, Bell Bottom Country, is out now. And then let's talk about Yellowstone for a second. Can you tell me about the person you're playing in Yellowstone? Because the, the character's name is not Lainey. No. What's the character's name? Abby. Okay. And then what does – I know you sing in the show, which yeah. is cool, because I remember way back in the day you were like, I got a song placed in Yellowstone. Yeah. Like we very, very first started talking about this. And you were like, I can't believe it. Yeah. So now this is just bizarre how the world works. It's now you're wild. actually in the show. Yep. It's when, crazy. When when that one of your first songs got placed, it was like the biggest thing that ever happened to you. Yeah. It, it truly was. Um, so Taylor Sheridan. Did you keep a good relationship with them? And then that's how they knew you to even talk to you about this role? Yeah, so they had put several of my songs in there. And then Taylor invited me out to play like a horse reining show out in Vegas. And that's where I just got to get to know him, shake his hand, and like become his friend. And he pretty much told me, he was just like, anytime you got new music, send it my way. And we just kept in contact. I went and played like a little acoustic show for the cast and crew during the pandemic. Dang, even that's cool. Yeah, I know. I was like, this is also one of the coolest things I've yeah. ever done. So fast forward, um, February, he called me and just said, I want to create a character specifically for you. I want you to Dang, wear what you wear. he created one for you. You didn't have a role to audition for. He's like, mm -hmm. you're exactly what we want. We want to make that based on you. Yeah. It Dang. was it's a blessing from the Lord. That's just it. Do you and freak to, out? Yes, I was trying not to on the phone with him. I was like, "You sure you want me? You sure you want that?" And he's like, "Yep." He said, "Trust me, you can do it." Um, he said, "You know, you pretty much get to act on stage every single night anyway." You so, how do, do you it. prepare? Because I don't know what acting experience you have, other than when you were making it in music and you were playing other characters, you know, doing that. But I mean, have you ever acted in anything? I mean, I created a little like character skits during the pandemic to keep myself entertained and just people entertained. But no. Uh -uh. So well, then what do you do? Do you go and start taking any sort of acting class? So there's a girl here in Nashville. Her name is Bridget. And she didn't really, like, teach me how to act. But she was teaching me little, like, tools to, how do I say it, to, like, stay grounded and remain, like, in my body. She didn't want me to, like, memorize my lines or anything. She wanted me to, like, have a good idea of what they look like. But she wanted me to really, like, listen 
to what the other person was saying to me. So it would just sound like a conversation. And, um, yeah, so she just pretty much gave me those tools, and I just gave it my best shot. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> the first time, because I did some episodes in Nashville where I had to actually act, and I'm not an actor, mm -hmm. I was like, I, my heart was like yeah. the first couple of times because yeah. I'm not – they're all great. They spent their whole life training for this, right. and here I am, some Joe Blow off the street. I know. Did you have any sort of like I, imposter syndrome at all up there? Yes. I mean, when I showed up to the ranch, I'm like – these people are probably going to be like, what in the world? This girl ain't ever acted a day in her life. She's been acting a fool, but she ain't been <laughs> And um, But they did not treat me that way. They welcomed me with open arms, and they were all fans of my music. Did it help they had seen you before? Like you performed for them, some of them? Like, so you kind of had yeah, ish, was, a relationship-ish with some of them? Yeah, we kind of like knocked the dust off. So it all, it just, it's crazy how life works. Dang. And Crazy. so, do you have like intense lines? Do you shoot anybody? I don't do shoot you... nobody, and they didn't take me to the train station. So. Oh, thank God! You Yet. Don't get... <laughs> Yet, Yet, We don't. <laughs> when they're done with me, yeah. they'll be like, "Just get her out. Just take her." <laughs> and you're singing in the show too, obviously, right? Yep, I'm and playing a musician. So, do they take that music and p also put it somewhere Yellowstone-ish? I mean, is that a thing? Is what do you any... mean? Well, I mean, like it's not any songs on your album, right? Do you, are you yeah, there are a few on the on the entire season that are on my record, but I also wrote some specifically for. And is it like a Yellowstone soundtrack or streaming list? So or? they do have like you know, they have like streaming list and stuff like that. Uh, and it's crazy the amount of people who have found out about me through Yellowstone. I mean, like the music is a huge part of the show, which I don't know if it's normally that way for other shows. Any kissing scenes? You'll have to wait and see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Twenty dollars is twenty dollars, boy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you, it, are you from Louisiana in the show? So what's crazy is I kind of had to, I kind of had to like make up what I thought the character was in my mind because I just pretty much got her lines and that was it. I didn't have like a character description. So in my mind, she's from Louisiana because she sounds like this. Mm -hmm. um, in my mind, she's maybe traveling through Montana, uh, musician maybe finds like a group of people who is really, really starting to like dig her music. And um, she stays for a while. And you can ride horses. And so did you ride any horses? I didn't ride horses yet. Mm-hmm. So she hadn't been thrown on the train. Okay, yes. Yeah, she's, <laughs> yeah, she's not dead. <laughs> yet. Which is good. When does the show come out? November 13th. Dang, that's coming up. Coming Are you in the first up. episode? I'm in the first episode. That's amazing. Oh, there's for sure going to be a spinoff. Yellowstone yeah. with, <laughs> this is it. You're going to have your own version. It's oh, going to be your Lord. own country. We're going to follow your country career as Abby. On, that's so cool. Do you? I mean, you have to be at home when you finally get a little bit of a break and go, holy crap. Every now and then when I'm like being still, mm -hmm. which I've only slept in my bed maybe 11 nights this year. Um, I got to sleep in my bed last night, which was pretty dang cool. But, um, yeah, I have to kind of look up and take a breath and be like, wow, everything that I, I put on my like list last year of things that I wanted to accomplish, we we're doing that and more. Yeah, Christmas would hit you pretty good. Yeah. Because you'll have a few days for sure where you can't do anything because nobody does anything. Yep. And you're going to be like, I hey, this is awesome. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's awesome to watch it just from, it's I mean, crazy. I've known you for a few years now. You've come a long way since doing the get up in your backyard. It's huh? crazy. I mean, like, it's so crazy. It's so cool. I'm so excited for it. I'm so happy. More than that, I'm happy your dad's better. Thank you. I did see he was out of the hospital. I was asking that for Thank the show you. so we could, t uh, you know, just address it. But that's 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 probably the most important thing it is. right there for you. The day that they told me I had six nominations for CMAs, they also sent me a video of him walking down the halls in the hospital, and that meant more to me than the CMA nominations. Well, what a day, though, all together. All together. And he's going to go with you to the CMAs. Yep. That is all. That's just amazing. I'm so proud of you. Yep. I'm so proud of you. What's the song? I want to talk about the record again for a second. But what's the song on this record where you go, you know, people haven't heard this till the record came out, but when they do, this song is one I'm – not most proud of, but I feel like at this moment in this season really represents me. What's that song? Oh my gosh! I know there's a lot of them, but you got to you gun to your horse's head. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Um, probably the song that I did write for my daddy, "Those Boots." I feel like it was super special when I was writing it, but to me, it means something completely different now. Just hold on to the people you love. We're gonna play a little clip of "Those Boots." We don't have it. Oh, we do have it. Well, look at us. Holy crap! We're, we're okay. Play a little bit of that. Those boots, they walk right with the Lord Those boots would only drive a board Those boots made a damn good living Spun my mama all around the kitchen Those boots would never go out of style One day they'll walk me down the aisle I pray every day, one day I will find a man to be Those boots 
That's so cool. Goosebumps. Yeah, it's so cool. There was, there was a picture that you posted on Instagram of you and Luke Combs, and both of you look like you're 12. Yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah. What What was that? What, when was that? that what was, was that? What were you doing? 2014. That's when I met him. I met him at Tin Roof, Tin Roof Revival off of Demumbrian. And I remember walking in. I had been in town for three years at that point. He had, didn't even live here. Um, and I walked up to him. I just had this gut feeling about this dude. And I tapped him on the shoulder and said, I want to write with you. And then he was like, okay, well, I'll make a writing trip. So his first writing trip that he made to Nashville, he came over to my camper trailer and we'd write music together. And now I'm on tour with him. I'm glad he remembered. <laughs> and if he had forgotten, he didn't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, Kevin Costner, do you say it Kevin Costner or Kevin Costner? I say Costner. Right. Well, no, everybody does except for Eddie who fights. He's fighting tooth and nail about Kevin this. Kevin Costner. Costner. Nobody, yeah. nobody says Costner. Well, we just need to call him up and Costner, ask him. yes, of course. <laughs> how, how, how is he to work with? Um, so I never even got to actually shake his hand and meet him. Um, Your scenes a, weren't the same? like are you, We were actually in one of the same scenes, but it was complete chaos, and it was like 500 extras around. They pretty much like put him in the scene and then like pulled him out. Does um, he talk like Batman in real life? Because he's always like, hey, you know what? I think he does. Yeah. I, I want to talk like I think, that. I think he does. I wish that was my natural. <laughs> um, so uh, I was going to read a lot of your, your dates, but there are just so many. Of them. You're all over the place. I mean, you're really just hustling, and your shows are getting bigger, and you're playing with Luke. I'll just say this. Go to LaneyWilson.com because it's all up there. Go watch Laney. She's just a great performer. Performer, is, that's what I would say, because you're obviously a good singer, and you play guitar, but you're, you're a really great performer. Thank you. Because you watch your show, and you're like, well, how, how about that? Well, how about that? You just keep elevating. Thank it. you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I think it was all them Hannah Montana days I did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, I'm so proud of you. Thank Congrats you. on the record. Congrats Thank on the so CMAs. Much. It is just wonderful to watch the good guy win, you know? Let's do it. That's super cool. Not me, you. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah just, I'm watching you. You're the good guy today. All right. There she is, our friend Lainey Wilson, everybody. Thanks, y'all. I love y'all.